uh, maybe let us start right now. So uh, can I try to share my screen? Yeah, sure, of course, yeah. Um, so, so uh, could you see my slides? Yeah, it is perfect, yeah. Yes, okay. mm -hmm. And full screen, yeah, good, very nice, yeah. Okay, the last uh, speaker of today's session is Grigory Rabov with his talk on divisible design graphs from Marian Association schemes. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, thank you so much. Uh, good, uh, if you, good day or good evening, dear colleagues. Uh, today, I would like uh, to talk about the following topic, how to construct uh, divisible design graphs from Higmanian association scheme. Uh, I would like to note that uh, this work is uh, still unfinished, uh, so all comments and suggestions are welcome, but uh, I think uh, this workshop is uh, less or more informal meeting, and maybe it is a good idea to share my observation exactly here uh, on this event. So uh, let's start. Uh, during the talk, we have uh, two keynote objects, namely an association scheme and divisible design graph. And uh, I'm sure that everyone here knows what is an association scheme, but to make the talk self-contained and introduce some notations and uh, related concepts, uh, I recall the definition briefly. Uh, let omega be a finite set and S a partition of uh, the Cartesian square of omega. Uh, then a pair X consisting of omega and S is called uh, an association scheme or briefly just a scheme on omega if uh, the following three conditions are satisfied. Uh, the diagonal of omega square belongs to our partition uh, if some binary relation S belongs to our partition, then uh, the relation inverse to S uh, also belongs to our partition. And uh, further during the talk, the inverse relation is denoted by S star. And for all relations R, S, and T from our partition, uh, the number of elements gamma from omega such that uh, the pair alpha gamma belongs to R and pair gamma beta belongs to S uh, does not depend uh, on the choice uh, of the pair alpha beta from T. So uh, the number of triangles uh, whose one side belongs to T and two other sides belongs to R and S does not depend on the choice uh, of the side from T. So uh, the elements uh, from our partition are called basis relations of uh, the scheme X. The number of basis relations is called the rank of X. And uh, if uh, S is a basis relation and alpha is uh, an element of omega, then uh, the uh, number of uh, beta from omega such that the pair alpha beta belongs to S does not depend on the choice of uh, alpha, and uh, it is called the valence of uh, basis relation S and uh, denoted by N with index S. So uh, let's move uh, further to Higmanian association schemes. Uh, but uh, to define uh, such scheme, we need uh, some more concepts from the association scheme theory. Uh, so by uh, S cap, we denote uh, the set of all unions of some relations from our partition S and an equivalence relation E on omega is called uh, a parabolic of X if it is a union of uh, some basis relations of our scheme. Uh, of course, every scheme has uh, two trivial parabolics, uh, namely the diagonal of omega square and the Cartesian square. And uh, a scheme is called imprimitive if it has a proper non-trivial uh, parabolic E. Uh, proper 
means that it is strictly le less than the Cartesian square of omega. And uh, non-trivial means that it is strictly uh, more than the diagonal of omega square. Uh, a scheme is said to be symmetric if every basis relation of the scheme is symmetric. And uh, finally, we say that uh, a scheme is indecomposable if it is not Ries or tensor product of schemes of smaller ranks. I don't provide uh, the exact definitions of uh, these operations, namely Ries and tensor product, but I think the general concept is clear. Uh, the scheme is indecomposable if it cannot be constructed from the smaller schemes by using uh, usual operations from association scheme theory. So, and uh, now we are ready uh, to define what is a Hickmanian scheme. An imprimitive symmetric indecomposable scheme of rank five is said to be Hickmanian. Uh, this definition was introduced uh, in the paper uh, by Kling, Yuchuk, and Zifaz. And uh, they uh, enumerated some such schemes in, in that paper. Also, they uh, construct some graphs from such schemes. So, this is a long paper with many, many things. But of course, uh, studying of such schemes was initiated by Donald Hickman uh, in his paper written in uh, 1995. And he was motivated uh, by a connection of such schemes with, uh, on the one hand, designs and finite geometries, and on the other hand, uh, with permutation groups. And uh, in this paper, uh, he provided uh, very interesting examples of uh, such scheme of rank five, uh, which uh, appeared from, uh, from some in primitive permutation groups. Uh, on the other hand, uh, he gave uh, parameterization of such schemes. Uh, I mean, uh, parameterization of intersection numbers, uh, irreducible characters, so some other arithmetic parameters. So, and also, of course, he establishes the connection with uh, designs and finite geometries that such schemes. Uh, uh, appear very often uh, in the context, in, in such context. So, and uh, one more observation about uh, Hegmanian schemes, which uh, will be important for us. Hegmanian scheme has at most two proper non-trivial parabolics. Uh, since uh, it is imprimitive, it, it has at least one such parabolic. But if uh, it has few or more, Parabolics, then uh, it should be decomposable, it should bear the risk product effect. So, many scheme has at most two proper trivial parabolics. Uh, so, now let's move to our uh, second uh, main object, namely divisible design graph. Uh, I recall the definition a key regular graph gamma on V vertices is called a divisible design graph or DDG for short. Uh, if the vertex set of gamma can be partitioned into M classes of size M, uh, such that two distinct vertices from the same class have exactly lambda one common neighbors and two vertices from different classes have exactly uh, lambda two common neighbors. Uh, this uh, concept of definition was introduced in the paper by Hammers, Karahan, and Molenberg. Uh, and of course, divisible design graphs are closely related uh, to designs. And in fact, uh, the adjacency matrices of divisible design graphs are exactly incidence uh, matrices of, a symmetric divis of symmetric divisible designs. So, uh, the numbers v, k, lambda 1, lambda 2, m, and n are called the parameters of our divisible design graph. Uh, the divisible design graph uh, is a generalization, in fact, 
so-called Vika lambda graph, if m is equal to 1, or n is equal to 1, or lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, then our divisible design graph is exactly a Vika lambda graph. Vika lambda graph uh, is a strongly regular graph with lambda equal to mu. So this means every pair of vertices have uh, the same uh, number of common numbers, say lambda. Uh, nowadays, uh, the theory of uh, divisible design graphs is under active development. Uh, there are many interesting constructions, interesting properties of such graphs. Uh, we obtained in the papers of Kronovich, Hemmers, Kabanov, Karakani, Malenberg, Panasin, Kashalagin, Schwab. So if I uh, uh, forget somebody, I'm sorry. Uh, also, I uh, mentioned one more recent result. Uh, all uh, divisible design graphs with at most uh, 39 vertices were classified by Panasin and Chalagin. And uh, maybe in the end of the talk, we uh, say some words about computation. Uh, so, and two main objects are defined and maybe uh, let's move to uh, the main result, the main observation. Uh, but uh, before to formulate uh, the theorem, uh, we need uh, some preparations. Uh, let X be a Higmanian scheme with two embedding parabolics, E and F. E is a small parabolic and F is a big parabolic, e is a subset of F, of course. Uh, e and F, of course, are proper and uh, And X is a Higmanian scheme on the set omega with basis relations uh, as zero which is always equal to the diagonal of omega square S1, S2, S3, and S4. And uh, we order uh, the basis relation in such way that uh, E, the sm small parabolic, is a union of S0 and S1. F is a big parabolic, is a union of S0, S1, and S2. And the valency of S3 is uh, less or equal to the valency of uh, S4. Uh, we, all, we can always order basis relation in such way, and such ordering is unique. So, and further, we will use exactly such order. And for short, we will write uh, an i instead of n s i to denote the valency of uh, the basis relation s i. And now uh, let us consider two arithmetic conditions uh, on the valences of our Higmanian scheme. Uh, the first condition. Uh, the first condition is here. One uh, divided by n3 plus one divided by n4 should be equal to one divided by n1 minus one divided by n1 plus one. And for every i, equal to three or four, we consider the following arithmetic condition. Uh, N2 divided by N1 plus one minus minus uh, two uh, multiple by NY and divided by N seven minus Y should be equal to one. So for every I uh, equal to three or four, we have such condition. And uh, by S1, we denote the class of all Higmanian scheme with two embedding parabolics satisfying this condition, condition one. And by the class of S2i, where i is equal to three and four, uh, we denote the class of all uh, Higmanian schemes with two embedding parabolics uh, satisfying condition 2i, this condition. So, uh, for every uh, Hickmanian scheme with two embedding parabolics, by gamma i of x, we denote the graph with the vertex set omega, with the same vertex set, and uh, with the h set, which is the union of s2 and si, where i again uh, equal to 3 and 4. So for every scheme, 
uh, Hickmanian scheme with two embedding parabolics, we construct two graphs, gamma three and gamma four. And K1 uh, is defined to be the class of all graphs uh, of the form gamma i of x, where x runs over all schemes from the class S1, and i uh, runs over the set consistent of three uh, or four. Uh, so what we do for every scheme x from the class S1, we take two graphs, gamma three of x and gamma four of x, uh, whose edge set is a union S2 with S3, and uh, the union S2 with S4. Uh, the class K to I is defined to be the class uh, of graphs consistent of the graphs of the form gamma I of X, uh, where X runs over the class S to I. Here, I is fixed. Uh, and again, it is equal to three and four. So for every scheme from the class S to three, we take the graph gamma three of X, of X and we obtain the class K to three. And for every scheme, from uh, the class S to four, we take the graph gamma four of X and obtain the class uh, K to four. And uh, of course, K two is a union of two subclasses, K to three and K to four. And uh, finally, uh, we need to introduce one more very easy class of graphs denoted by K zero, for example. Uh, it is a class of graphs consisting of all complete multipartite graphs and their complements and all graphs of the forms, of the following two forms. Uh, this is a disjoint union of complete bipartite graphs. And uh, this is uh, the lexicographic product of disjoint union of edges and complete graph. And uh, it is very natural uh, to say that a graph is a fusion of an association scheme if the edge set of a graph is a union of uh, basis relation of our scheme. So, and uh, now we are ready to formulate the main result of the talk. Uh, the following here. Let gamma be a graph, which is a fusion of a Higmanian association scheme with two embedding parabolics. Uh, then gamma is a divisible design graph if and only if uh, gamma belongs to uh, the union of classes K0, K1, and K2. So uh, this theorem uh, gives uh, a complete classification uh, of all divisible design graphs, which are fusions of Hitmanian association schemes with two parabolas. Uh, maybe one more observation. Uh, if gamma is a graph uh, from the union of the classes K1 and K2, then gamma is a weaker lambda graph, a strongly regular graph with lambda is equal to mu, if and only if gamma belongs to the intersection of classes K1 and K2. Uh, and I think now everyone here has the following question. Uh, are ah, the, these classes of schemes and graphs uh, non-empty, or maybe they are empty, and this result is uh, some stupid. Uh, but no, these classes are non-empty, of course. And moreover, uh, they contain infinitely many graphs. And uh, further, I, uh, I will show how to construct a divisible design graph in such a way. And, uh, so, so uh, we will follow the following scheme, not association scheme, but a scheme of explanation. Uh, firstly, we uh, construct a Higmanian association scheme. Second, we check that this, this scheme uh, belongs to one of the classes, so that it is satisfied one of the arithmetic conditions to the variances. And uh, finally, we construct uh, the following, the corresponding uh, divisible design graph. So, and uh, we uh, will use such scheme of explanation three times. And let's start with uh, divisible design graphs from the class K1. Uh, first of all, I would like to know that uh, this construction 
includes the construction of Kabana and Shalagina uh, of divisible design Cayley graphs. And in fact, uh, their result uh, was uh, in some sense a starting point for, for this work. So, but uh, firstly, uh, let us construct uh, a Higmanian association scheme. Uh, let Q be a prime power, uh, R, R uh, is a positive integer greater than or equal to 2, and F uh, be the field or the Q to the power R. Uh, a generator of uh, the multiplicative group of F is denoted by sigma, and uh, by tau we denote sigma to the power Q minus 1. Uh, A is defined to be a negative group of uh, our finite field. And the group G is a semi-direct product of uh, A and the cyclic group generated by tau, where tau acts on A uh, in the natural way by the right multiplications. Uh, so uh, it is easy to see that the order of tau is equal to this number q to the power r minus one divided by q minus one, uh, this number we denote by l, and uh, the order of g is equal to q to the power r multiple by a. Uh, the group a, the additive group of r of finite field, uh, has exactly l maximal subgroups, and each of them is, of course, for the q to the power r, r minus one. And uh, there exists an ordering of uh, the maximal subgroups of A, say A0, A1, A L minus 1, such that uh, the set F, S, which is written on the slide, is inverse closed. So the set uh, is constructed in the following way. Uh, we take for every Y from 0 to L minus 1, we take the complement to a y in a and multiple this set, this complement to tau to the power i. So, and take the union for all i from 0 to l minus 1. So, uh, we can order our maximal subgroups in such a way that this set is inverse closed. Now, let us construct uh, a partition S of our group G. Uh, the set X0 contains only zero of our field. Uh, the set X1 is a sub subgroup A0 uh, without uh, zero, of course. Uh, uh, the set X2 is a complement to A0 in A. Uh, the set X3 is a union uh, of the sets of the form AI multiple to the tau to the power i, where i runs over from one, not from zero, it's, it, it is important, from one to L minus one. Or in other terms, uh, this uh, set uh, can be uh, interpreted like uh, uh, as uh, the complement or in G to the union of A0 and S. And uh, the set X4 is uh, the complement uh, of X2 in S. So we have four, five uh, sets. Uh, we, and uh, of course, we have a partition of G into five sets. Uh, it can be checked that this partition is a sure partition. Uh, sure partition was mentioned in the talk uh, by Professor Minimasa. So, but uh, this means that uh, this partition defines a sure ring of a G. But if we have a sure ring, we can take the corresponding uh, Cayley scheme, the corresponding uh, association scheme, with, which is a Cayley scheme of a G. So, the basis relations of uh, such scheme will be the following. Uh, it consists of all pairs of the form G, X multiple G, where G runs over all elements from G, and X runs over all elements from XY. 
So, and uh, we obtain a partition of uh, G square into such binary relations. And so, uh, this, this is a, an association scheme. Uh, since uh, our, since uh, there are exactly two proper non-trivial subgroups uh, of G, which are unions of uh, basic sets, uh, our Pygmanian scheme has exactly two embedding parabolics, uh, which correspond to A0, of course, and A. Uh, the valences uh, of uh, our scheme are the following. So I, uh, they are written on the slide. And it can be checked directly then uh, that uh, these valences uh, satisfy condition one. So, and uh, our association scheme belongs to the class S1. Uh, also, it can be checked that uh, X belongs to class S2. So this means that the valences uh, satisfy condition two. If and don't leave Q is equal to three, and in this case, X belongs to the subclass S to three. And now we can take two Cayley graphs of a G, namely the Cayley graphs with connection set X two union with X three and X two union with X four. And uh, these graphs are exactly the graph gamma three and gamma four for our scheme X. And these graphs belongs to the class K1. Uh, the graph gamma three of X uh, belongs to the class K2 if and only if Q is equal to three. And of course, in the latter case, gamma three of X belongs to the intersection of our classes. And in this case, it is a Vika lambda graph. Uh, so the graph gamma four of X is exactly the graph constructed in the paper by uh, Kaban and Shalaginov. If Q is equal to two, then gamma three of X and gamma four of X are isomorphic. Uh, if Q is equal to three, then gamma three of X is a Vika lambda graph. But if Q is uh, greater than or equal to five, then these two graphs are non-isomorphic. So uh, this may be, uh, uh, this construction could do a little bit generalized construction of uh, Kabanis and Shalagin. So uh, let's move to the graph uh, from the class two, uh, from the class K2. Uh, again, our construction includes the construction of Panasin and Shalagin. So, and uh, first of all, I uh, I construct uh, an, as an association scheme, many association scheme, and after this we take the corresponding divisible design graphs. Uh, so uh, I recall maybe some well-known definition, but nevertheless, uh, by nk weighting matrix double where of order n and weight k, we mean uh, n times n matrix consisting of uh, zeros, uh, ones, and minus ones, such that uh, W multiple to the uh, W transpose should be equal to K multiple to the identity matrix uh, of size M. So, and let uh, T uh, uh, is a positive integer greater than uh, or equal to three, such as that uh, there exists a uh, vacant matrix with parameters for multiple T if, and for multiple T minus one, and such that the main diagonal of uh, this matrix contains blocks of zeros of size four. And we take the following procedure. Uh, the matrix uh, W prime is obtained from matrix W by replacing each zero by uh, the matrix of size two consisting of zero. Uh, each uh, I, one uh, is replaced by the identity matrix of size two and each minus one uh, is replaced uh, by uh, the matrix of size two, which is difference uh, between 
all identity matrix of size 2 and identity matrix of size 2. So uh, I would like to know that uh, this, uh, this, this trick uh, was uh, suggested in the paper of course by Nassim and Shalagi. Uh, so, and now uh, we consider the following uh, five matrices. Uh, the matrix A0 is a identity matrix of size 8 multiple T. Uh, the matrix A1 uh, is the tensor product of uh, the identity matrix of size 4 multiple t and uh, the difference between the matrix G2 and I2. Uh, the matrix A2 is a tensor product of the identity matrix of size t and uh, the tensor product of uh, difference between uh, G4, uh, G4 and I4 and G2. And the matrix A3 is uh, uh, exactly the matrix W prime. And uh, A4 in the remaining matrices, which is the difference between all identity matrix of size 8 multiple T and all uh, previous matrices. Uh, it can be checked uh, directly that uh, this matrix is defined, uh, define uh, a coherent algebra. So, and of, if we have a coherent algebra, uh, we can take uh, the corresponding uh, association scheme to this coherent algebra. Uh, I think maybe the, the most uh, you know, uh, the most of us know what is the coherent algebra. But uh, if if somebody will have such question, I can answer after. And recall what is this. Uh, so it can be checked that the corresponding uh, association scheme is a Higmanian scheme with two embedding parabolics. And these parabolics uh, correspond to the matrices A0 plus A1 and A0 plus A1 plus A2. Uh, the valences of uh, this association scheme uh, are the following 1, 6, and two equal valences for multiple t minus 1. It can be checked that uh, this scheme satisfies condition two. Moreover, it satisfies condition two, three, and two, four because, because we have two equal valences. So this means that uh, the corresponding uh, graphs gamma three of x and gamma four of x, uh, whose adjacent symmetrices are a two plus a three and a two plus a four are exactly divisible design graphs from the class K2. And uh, it is easy to check that uh, these valences uh, do not satisfy uh, condition one, and hence uh, uh, these graphs uh, do not belong to the class K1. So these graphs are exactly from the difference between classes K1 and K2. So, and uh, one more construction. Maybe this construction is uh, new in the sense of divisible design graphs, as I can check. But of course, the corresponding Kigmanian scheme is uh, well known. So uh, let's try to construct. Uh, again, we deal with scaly graphs, in fact. Uh, let H be an arbitrary abelian group. And uh, G a generalized dihedral group uh, with abelian subgroup H of index 2. And by B, we denote the involution in generalized dihedral group, which inverses every element from H. Uh, now, let T be a divisible different set in H uh, relative to a proper non trivial subgroup N of H, such that uh, so called intersection condition. Uh, is satisfied. Uh, intersection condition means that uh, the cardinality of the intersection T of N multiple T does not depend on the choice of T from T. And uh, uh, denote the order of N by N, the index of N in H by N, and the size of T by K. So these uh, notations are usual in uh, the context of uh, different sets. 
And now again, we consider the partition of the group G into five subsets. Uh, the first subset contains only identity, uh, the set X0. The set X1 is uh, the subgroup N without identity. Uh, the set X2 is a complement uh, to N in H. The set X3 uh, is a T, our divisible different set multiple by B. And the set X4 is a complement to T in H multiple by B. So we have uh, a partition of G into five classes. And again, it is a sure partition. Uh, it is defined the sure ring of the G, and we can take the corresponding Hickmanian association scheme. Uh, this scheme uh, has exactly two embedding parabolics corresponding to N and to H. And uh, the valences of uh, our scheme will be the following uh, N minus one, N multiple N minus one, K, and multiple N minus K. And uh, it is easy to check now that our scheme belongs to the class S1 if and only if this condition is satisfied. Uh, it is exactly condition one from the previous slides uh, in which uh, we replace the valences by these values. Uh, and in fact, there are infinitely many such divisible different set whose parameters uh, satisfy this condition. Uh, infinite families of such sets can be found, for example, in the book uh, written by Alexander Pot. So, and uh, yeah, there are infinitely many such divisible different sets. And so, for every such different set, for example, from the Pot's book, we can construct the corresponding uh, Manian scheme satisfying this condition. And of course, uh, we can take in this case. Uh, the corresponding k graphs of a G with connection sets X2 union with X3 and X2 union with X4. And these graphs uh, belong uh, to the class K1. Uh, also, it can be, che it can be checked uh, that X, our scheme, belongs to S2 if and only if one of the following arithmetic conditions uh, is satisfied. But uh, I don't know uh, whether such different sets exist. Maybe there are no such different sets, it, and it is possible to prove that there are no such different sets. But maybe it's possible to construct a different set satisfying uh, this one, at least one of these conditions. I don't know. So, but nevertheless, uh, we have uh, infinitely many graphs, uh, divisible design graphs from this construction. So, and uh, I would like to finish my talk with some open questions. Uh, maybe they are something stupid or maybe they are easy, but uh, so uh, from the above results, which uh, were presented during the talk, it follows that uh, the difference between classes K1 and K2 the difference between classes K2 and K1 and the intersection of classes K1 and K2 are non-empty. Moreover, the classes, uh, uh, the intersection of classes K1 and K2 and the complement uh, of K2 and K1 contain infinitely many divisible design graphs. So this uh, follows from the above construction. But we don't know whether there exist infinitely many positive integers T such that uh, the weighted matrix required for the construction too. Uh, whether the, we don't know whether there exists infinitely many positive integer T such that there exists um, uh, the weighted matrix required for construction too. So uh, there are some such matrices uh, for, for example, for T is equal to three or some other values of T, but uh, it is an open question, I think, uh, about whether this set is infinite. But so the first natural question is the following. Uh, does uh, the complement uh, of the class K1 and class K2 contain infinitely many graphs? So uh, as I can check, uh, there are no uh, graphs 
from this difference other than the graphs from construction two. If we say about uh, divisible design graphs with at most 39 vertices, and about if we say about divisible design Cayley graphs with at most uh, 59 vertices. So, and uh, the last question is the following Does a divisible design graph, which is a fusion of a Hickmanian association scheme with exactly one parabolic, exist? Uh, today, during the talk, we discuss only Hickmanian schemes with two parabolics. But of course, there are some examples, some infinite families of uh, Higmanian schemes with exactly one parabolic. But uh, it is not known whether such uh, schemes uh, can produce divisible design graphs. And again, as I can check, there are no uh, such divisible design graphs uh, which arise from a Higmanian scheme with exactly one parabolic. If we say about uh, such graphs uh, with at most 39 vertices, and uh, if we say about um, such, such k graphs with at most uh, 59 vertices. So I think uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. I uh, thank you again very, very much for this interesting uh, talk with new results and some open questions. Thank you very much. Are there any questions to Grigory? Yes. Oh, yeah, Vladislav, yeah, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I would like to ask, um, uh, what about the spectrum of the uh, divisible design graph from your family? Uh, it is possible. Um, so uh, it, it is possible to calculate the value, the eigenvalues, of course, but uh, I don't think about uh, the multiplicities of eigenvalues. So yes, uh, is there a, a four distinct eigenvalues? Uh, some graphs with four distinct eigenvalues. Uh, so uh, I can check. So yeah, uh, because uh, if I if I remember correctly, there are exact formulas in the papers, for example, uh, Harakani, Hennings, and Molenberg, where uh, the eigenvalues can be computed from a uh, parameters of divisible design graphs. Yes. Yes, yes, but uh, there is no possibility to calculate uh, multiplicities. Yes, yes, it's, it's uh, yes, it, it's exactly so. I, I I don't think about multiplicities. Yes, mm -hmm. but but yes. but is, uh, of course I can check uh, I can values of these graphs, and of course I have parameters. Uh, I I don't uh, write it on the slide because. Uh, uh, the formulas are very big, and uh, of course, and in fact, we have many different sets here. So, and for each different set, we have different parameters. So, uh, of course, the parameters and uh, the eigenvalues uh, are computed, and uh, so they um, will be written, of course. Oh, thank you. Uh, I have uh, one more question. Um, in uh... Our paper with Leonid Shalaginov, yes. uh, when we uh, uh, defined um, the, yes, uh, the generation uh, set, uh, yes. this set is uh, very uh, depend uh, uh, of ordering uh, these uh, classes, a zero and so on. Um, uh, you have a new view to this situation. It's very interesting. Uh, you. Uh, and uh, what, uh, ah, as usual, uh, uh, we have non-isomorphic graphs uh, for uh, uh, different ordering. Can you uh, uh, prove this fact that uh, for <laughs> any ordering we uh, have uh, non-isomorphic graphs? Uh, I understand. Yes, of course. Uh, there are uh, no, there are non-isomorphic graphs. If you take different orders, we can obtain isomorphic graphs. Yes, this is true. But uh, also, we can obtain isomorphic graphs. For example, if q is equal to two, then uh, all graphs uh, will be isomorphic here. So uh, I think. Uh, and uh, for example, graphs gamma three and gamma four will be isomorphic. But uh, as I understand, your question is the following. Uh, is it possible to classify the situation to classify when um, uh, different orderings 
uh, lead uh, to different non-isomorphic yes. graphs. Yes. 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 Yeah. I, I think uh, so. I also don't think about this uh, because uh, we have yeah, because uh, there are many orders, of course, and uh, many of them can be used for this construction. No, but this, this it, is a uh, good question. Very special. Yeah, but but there are different. But we can take different orderings here, and uh, these orderings can lead to isomorphic graphs, but can, uh, they can lead to non-isomorphic graphs. Yeah, mm. uh, but I don't think uh, about uh, this situation. That's very interesting because uh, I don't uh, have any examples for different ordering uh, when graphs uh, is isomorphic. Um. um for. Yeah, I understand. Uh, but uh, if Q is equal to two, uh, I, uh, uh, yeah. so I think if Q is equal to two here, if we take Q is equal to two, but uh, I think maybe all graphs uh, will be isomorphic, no? Oh. Or it is, well, it is not proof. If, if uh, Q is odd. If Q is odd, yes, I don't know about if Q is odd, but if Q is equal to two, I can prove that uh, that uh, these graphs are isomorphic. Mm, okay, thank so, you. But thank you. For... Thank you very much. Mm. Any other questions to Grigori? Yeah, I can hear please. Yeah, uh, about the weighing matrix. It's, you yeah. mentioned that uh, you don't know whether there are infinitely many t. Yes, yes. Uh, so what are the values of t for which such a weight, weight matrix exists? Can you give examples? Uh, yes, I uh, in yes, I have examples. In fact, there are uh, such examples in the paper of Anasin and Shalagin, if it may uh -huh. be in the paper of uh, Kronovich and uh, Hainers. There are uh -huh. such. Uh, oh, I I know that uh, t is equal to three is uh, mm. works, but uh, yeah. also I think uh, t is equal. Uh, there are some small such t, something like uh -huh. maybe five or something like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, so, but uh, I think there are maybe there are three or four such t mm. unknown. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, if not, then let us thank again uh, Grigori for this very nice, interesting talk. And since it was the last talk of today's session, let me also thank all our speakers of uh, Today, uh, it was really a great date dealing with distance regular graphs and uh, distance regular circulars. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh